The Lovell Radio Telescope behind me here at Jodrell Bank spends a lot of its time looking at bizarre astronomical objects called pulsars. So these things are actually flashing radio objects in the sky. When they were first discovered in 1967 at Cambridge by, by Jocelyn Bell, um, this was such an unusual thing to see, this regularly flashing object, that they actually called the first one LGM-1, Little Green Man 1, because they actually thought maybe it's actually a message from aliens. We now know it's nothing to do with aliens, it's actually the remnant of an exploded star. So the central part of the star collapses in on itself, at the explosion, it produces a very dense object called a neutron star. Weighs about as much as the sun, but it's about the size of a city, 20 kilometers across. Uh, and as it collapses in on itself, it starts to spin faster and faster, conserving angular momentum, and beaming out of its magnetic poles come two beams, so that when it spins, you see this beam flash past you, you get a flash, 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 just like a sort of cosmic lighthouse. Um, that, that, these things are incredibly stable clocks. You've got this regular sort of tick of the pulsar spinning. That allows us to study lots of different areas of science. One of the best, in fact, the best test of Einstein's uh, general theory of relativity, his theory of gravity, can be produced by observing pulsars. We may even be able to provide the first detection of gravitational waves, the ripples in space-time that Einstein's theory also predicted. Pulsars are great things, incredibly great laboratories for physics.